Hi everyone, hello. Um, welcome to my floor. Welcome to the blanket that was produced by Sophie McPike that I am using as decoration. I, hello, there's me. These are my lovely pants. Um, anyway, today I'm doing a little old sketchbook tour. Sketchbook, I'm using the word lightly because <laughs> there's a lot of loose sheets of paper and there's a lot of them. There are actually some sketchbooks as well, but I thought it would be fun to kind of show you um, the old stuff that I used to do, like especially when I was like a child. So between the ages of like 11 and 18, all of this was in a time where I didn't actually use sketchbooks. So I think all of this kind of goes up to the age of like 14 or so, maybe 15. And then after that, I do start kind of using a couple of sketchbooks and I, I have a few of those as well. Um, I will be going back to my regular microphone. It's just on my desk. I just thought I would use my phone at the moment to have a little bit more of like a, a personal greeting and uh, just a quick little explanation of what I'm doing. I also have a few questions from like a Q&A that I had talked about on my community post. So I'm going to answer a couple of them throughout the video as well. So the, um, the other thing I just kind of wanted to say about how I have organized this is these are all by category of what I have drawn and they should be, I mean, it took me ages. <laughs> they should be organized by time within the category, but because they overlap a lot and, you know, certain things kind of cross over and stuff there, the time line between them might be a bit shaky but like I'm going to try and keep it as easy to follow as possible and yeah so I guess I can just this is going to be really embarrassing by the way but um I I'll just get into it so and I hope you enjoy right okay here we go this is the voiceover with my proper mic so hopefully um everything sounds much nicer um actually I'd forgotten how good my phone mic sounds so um yeah <laughs> I know I can still use it, I guess. Um, right, so to get into the actual video, I have sped everything up quite quickly and I realize now that it might be a bit too fast, but this is the slowest fast option that I can pick. So if it's still too much, I would maybe recommend slowing it down in uh, on, on YouTube. Um, but hopefully it's not too bad. Really the entire kind of tour is to just kind of give you an idea of like what I used to do and all of that. So it's not going to be focusing on too much detail, but if it does bother you, then like I am sorry. Um, so like I was saying, when I was younger, for some reason, I never really used sketchbooks, which is strange considering that my mother was, is an artist. So I, in hindsight, I'm kind of like, why did she never get me one? But um, I also realized when I did think that, um, that I feel like I actually preferred using printer paper, which is what I was using all the time here. Um, I, I'm not really sure why. I think I just felt a little bit more kind of like free to move the sheets of paper around as I drew. Um, now I wouldn't be able to stand it. I'd have to have um, a sketchbook, but... So this first pile is obviously all Harry Potter related and um, I did a lot of fan art for Harry Potter when I was little. I don't really care about it very much now anymore, but at the time, God, I was obsessed. And um, so, yeah, like I was saying, each of these like bunches of drawings are ordered by like category. So this is my Harry Potter pile, but like it kind of spans the length of time from when I was 11 to I guess uh I'm not really sure when I stopped drawing it like mid-teens maybe but every bunch of drawings is going to be like that it's going to cover like um several years so like I was saying some of the some of the topics are going to overlap and that's <laughs> this is really as like um coherent as I could make it so sorry if it still isn't but um it's the best I could do what I will also say kind of ahead of time just so you know is that there will be several um 
bunches of drawings which relate to like stories that I used to kind of come up with when I was little and um, I've never been a writer. I, I enjoy writing, I'm just not very good at it and when I was little I would make up these stories just so that I could draw the characters. So there will be um, a few kind of like, there will be a few small collections of these kinds of um, drawings or concept art or whatever for these stories that I had in my head. So if, if they don't make sense, that is totally fine. <laughs> um, but I just kind of want to let you know just so that I don't have to kind of like explain what the storylines were because they weren't important. It was just for the, the characters. Um, but okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Harry Potter, this is pretty much all this was. And a lot of it, as you can see, was um, loads of very kind of like disembodied heads or body parts or whatever. Like I would kind of just practice bits and pieces like that every now and again. Um, I did like this little series of like the Yule Ball and the characters in their costumes and stuff costumes like their gowns um yeah I mean like I I understand the the whole controversy about Harry Potter now at, at the moment and everything and even just for myself like I'm just not really interested in it anymore but I can't like take that part of my life away when I was younger because it really was very like important to me um I was really really into it I mean like as were many people um so this is just the result of that like I, I just have a big um backlog not a backlog that's the wrong word but a, a, a collection of drawings from that time and there are a couple of them um that I actually still quite like um at the time I would copy quite a few different artists like right in the beginning where it almost had a kind of a more Disney-ish style. Um, I remember I was looking at an artist called T. Allen Raintree. I think that's what her name is. I think that's how you say it. But she had a very kind of Disney look in her art and she did lots of amazing kind of like illustrations for the Harry Potter series. And I, I copied a couple of her bits and pieces with that. Um, and then later on, a few years down the line, when I um, was a mem like well I still am I, I became a member of Deviant Art when I was about 13 and I eventually stumbled across the work of Makani who was also a really really big Harry Potter artist at the time and um, I, I really really loved her work and I ended up essentially copying her that's kind of like how I learned a lot when I was younger was I would just copy the styles of other people and then the bits and pieces that I found easier to draw would stick with me. And then the bits that I didn't like so much, then um, I just kind of gave up on them. But I always found that very helpful. Um, then in terms of kind of like idea generation, like these group, this group of drawings now that I'm showing you is my Lord of the Rings ripoff because I was also really into Lord of the Rings. Also very into horses. You'll see that a lot. Like I just drew horses a lot. Um, even though I, I didn't really involve myself with horses like in real life much, I, I did go horse riding at one point, but uh, I gave up on that quickly. But I did draw them a lot. Um, so yeah, like in a case like this, I would draw a lot of inspiration from Lord of the Rings or mythological figures or creatures or whatever. And um, I, you can see there, like... I was just drawing the ring rates as well, but I called them the black apparitions. So that meant that they were mine. <laughs> um, just nonsense like that, you know, just silly things that you do when you're a kid. Like it's, it was complete plagiarism, like, but you know, it's, um, it's part of how you kind of like learn and you develop your own kind of style or voice or whatever. Um, so it's still valuable, um, at that point. Um, these are another group of characters that I had a story for. Something about magical necklaces, I'm not really sure. But again, like I say, it was all just an excuse to draw the characters and kind of flesh out their world and their habits and their just their lifestyles. Um, nothing really more came of it from that.
so I was very good at having like certain scenes in my head um, and then just illustrating those. But I just never like this story now, I never wrote the one before I did actually write it out. I typed it out, actually. I have it printed somewhere in like the the depths of my bookcases at home, like back at my parents' house or something. I found it actually fairly recently. I'm going to have to look for it again. But I never wrote anything for this story. I just created the characters and I had like great ambitions to write something about it. But that was that was where kind of like I always failed was actually having a coherent plot and exciting things that would happen or, you know, being able to kind of actually come up with landscapes or place names or whatever. So it never really went anywhere. But these were kind of like the like the first kind of OCs that I really, really loved at the time. So I guess what I could do while this is going on, because like this theme of like characters for stories that never got written um, goes on for a little bit. So I might actually go on to the Q&A. Um, I got a f I got some really good questions. I'm really happy about that. So thank you to anybody who did ask. Okay, I'll start with the kind of the, the more basic ones. The first one is, when did you start drawing? And even though I know I started the video with like drawings from when I was like 11, obviously I started drawing before that. I don't know what happened to any of the stuff at that point I don't have any records or anything oh my god ah, this character okay I, I am going to mention first um this this story was kind of inspired by like Harry Potter and all of that so instead of a werewolf one of the characters is a were drag <laughs> which um don't think too hard about it because I certainly didn't I literally just decided that he'd be a dragon instead of a wolf and he became a were drag, which I think is um, probably a really fun idea for maybe a drag queen. But uh, yeah, that's it. Just I just wanted to point that out. It wasn't supposed to be kind of anything bad. <laughs> it was just a really stupid idea. But um, yeah, okay, back to the question. So yeah, I had been drawing like ever since I can remember, which is like the most cliched um, answer I could possibly give. I am aware of that. Um, but being around like five or six years old and this is something that my mom always reminds me is that even at that age um, I apparently already knew that I wanted to do art and I'm 100% certain that that's because I grew up around her um, who was painting all day nearly every day at home and I knew that that's what I, I was interested in that I wanted to be able to do that so um, yeah, I guess from when I was much, much younger than just 11, I had been drawing the whole time. I have no idea what I was drawing, but I was drawing. That was the point. So the second question that I'll answer is, um, how did you get into art? And did you always know you wanted to do something with it? So that ties back into the answer I just gave before. How I got into it was my mom because she is an artist so I was exposed to all of that from birth essentially and um, did I always know I wanted to do something with it I guess I did because she always tells me that from the age of six um, I, I told her that I wanted to become an artist when I grew up so there you go I don't remember it. I do remember the vague feeling of just knowing um, that I wanted to do art when I was older. That's kind of all. But I don't know like specifically at what point that kind of hit me. Next question. Uh, what are you worst at drawing? A lot of things. Um, machinery is definitely the first thing that comes to mind. Bu machinery and building anything man-made essentially. I'm shockingly bad at doing that. Um, machine machinery and machine parts and all of that just do my head in it's like it's oh yeah this was actually one of the villains of that story and I thought it was just so funny that I had just called him scallion like an onion but um, 
that's why I focus on that. Um, machines and robots, uh, vehicles, anything like that, just, I can't, I, I, I don't know what it is. I don't really, haven't tried that many times, but um, I just kind of feel that if I do try, it's just going to be an absolute, like, shit show, basically. So, um, yeah. Um, okay, so this pile of drawings, I think, is just an amalgamation of, like, creature art or just different... I don't know. Like, all of these horses, they look really good for that age. That's because I copied them religiously from a book. These horses, you can tell I didn't use reference because they look like an 11-year-old drew them. But the other ones, the ones that look actually pretty good is because I was, like copying line for line from um an animal drawing book or that that's why so yeah <laughs> um it's not really as impressive as it looks next question comes in two parts and the first part i'm also going to split into two parts because it says the it's an art related question what is a dream big project that you want to do one day and I'm going to split that into two because I have an unrealistic big dream and I have a realistic big dream. So um, the unrealistic one is I would really, really love to do something big with my characters that I've had since I was a teenager. This includes Rune, who I have like talked about and drawn quite a lot on my channel. She's just one character in like this massive cast. Um who have existed since I think I was like 15 or so, 14, 15, that kind of a thing. And um, I'd love to, cre I'd love, if I were an animator, I would cre want to create kind of like a little series where it's just a bit like slice of life, cute, focusing on maybe a different character per episode or something. There's no like big plot, you know, they're not magical. They've no um, grand adventures planned or anything they're just normal kind of like teenagers and they just they meant a lot to me at the time when I was a teenager and I don't really draw them as much now anymore but I still really really love them they they my friend and I came up with them when we were um teenagers and they just hold a lot of good memories for me and I think they're endearing characters so I, I just think, yeah, that's why it's unrealistic is because obviously it would just be totally self-indulgent and um, I really don't think anybody else would give a damn about them. But that's it. That's the unrealistic part about the big dream project is to have a little animation for them. Um, and that's that. And then the realistic big dream is when I actually finish my Nuzlocke comic that I... I really would love to be able to print it in like an actual book format, um, mostly for myself. I'd love to just compile everything I have into a book. So like all of the concept art that I created over the years, the actual comic itself, uh, I have a couple of like Q&As that I did with the characters and stuff, like everything, everything related to my Nuzlocke. I'd love to be able to just put it all together and get it all printed out in a really nice, maybe like hardcover book or something, and then have it as just like this kind of memento of this portion of my life, um, because it took so many years to get through. And um, I, I think that that is doable. I don't see why it wouldn't be. It would probably take a little while um, to kind of sort through everything. But if I did it just for me, then I'd be really happy if people kind of like at the end expressed that it was something that they'd be interested in like purchasing as well. Then obviously that would be something else, another road to go down. Um, but I'm really just kind of thinking of it in terms of like how I would want to kind of wrap up that whole part of my life because it did, it did take, I mean like I haven't finished it yet and it's already taken about like 11 years. So I think that would be like a really nice memory to put everything together. That was a really big ramble of a of an answer. But like, yeah, I, I kind of, I hope that makes sense. 
Um, and then the non-art related question was if you could exist in any fantasy world, which one and why? And I hummed and hawed a very long time over this question because there are quite a few worlds that I would like to live in or exist in, but then every time I thought of one, I would always be like, oh, but realistically, if I did exist in that world, then I would have all of these really big problems to uh, <laughs> look out for. And they're big problems, like... Um, one of the worlds I was kind of thinking of would be like Avatar, The Last Airbender and all of that. Like, And I was thinking, okay, not only would, I suppose it would depend on the time that I existed there, but if I were to exist in it during the time of the show, I would always have to worry about the bloody Fire Nation or whatever. And I would only want to exist in it if I knew I was going to be an earthbender. If I wasn't going to be an earthbender or an, an, not a bender at all, I wouldn't want to go in there. Um, I guess the most self-indulgent answer then would probably be like Pokemon. I mean, everything seems so like ide uh, idyllic and utopian. Everybody, well, pretty much kind of, there's like, there doesn't seem to be like any, cri any serious crime. Um, and you know, like... Who wouldn't love to be like best friends with like their Pokemon? Right, so this pile now I think is just like really random fan art um, and it spans also many, many years. So there's going to be a very big mix of things. And later on in the pile, I think, is it? This isn't fan art. This was just fashion design, like really bad fashion design. I think it's just a whole mixture of drawings that I didn't know what other category to put it into. So it's kind of like random drawings and sketches and then fan art as well. Um, yeah, okay, I guess that's what that is. So anyway, to get back into the fantasy world that I would potentially want to live in, I never really came to a solid decision on that, actually. Um, there would be, like, the world of Final Fantasy IX would be pretty cool as well. Any of the Final Fantasies would probably be pretty cool, except you'd always then have to worry about, like, some maniacal magic user or these terrifying monsters or, or whatever like there's there's always a downside to all of these um worlds so i think i'm just gonna go with avatar i think it would be so fun to be an earthbender and i'm just going to i'm just going to assume that i would be one And my last question that I got is, also in two parts, what's your experience with video games? Do you have any favourites you'd like to talk about? My experience with video games actually is not very broad. Um, I started playing games when I was about, oh, I don't know, when did the first Game Boys come out? But all I ever had was like Tetris or I had like a little game. It was a Super Mario game where he'd like, it was basically just Pong, I think, but for Super Mario. Is it Pong? I don't know. He kind of jumps into this little kind of long horizontal spaceship and then you just have to move left and right on the screen and like hit a ball back to um, destroy all of these like bricks and stuff. Um, so... That, I had those games for quite a long time. Then I got into Pokemon when I was about nine. And I think that's pretty much all I played uh, until the end of, or not the end, near the end of secondary school. I, oh no, sorry, that's wrong. I had a weird Bugs Bunny game as well. Ah, oh, and a Powerpuff Girl game. Th these were all just on the Game Boy and they were just like really random finds I think that my mum just randomly kind of found and uh they weren't re they weren't bad like but they were just pretty basic um then oh sims as well I used to play sims quite a lot since the the first kind of um the first one the sims and then sims 2 
and then I just kind of started to fall out of it after that. Actually, sorry, when I say that my knowledge or my experience with video games was limited, I guess it wasn't really. I got Final Fantasy X for my birthday when I was about like 15, I think, for my 15th birthday or maybe my 16th. That was amazing. That was by far the best game I'd ever played up until that point. And um, and then after that, I think I played Final Fantasy IX, which was also a banger. Then after that, I, I played Final Fantasy VII and VIII. Didn't like them as much. And then at the end of secondary school, so I, I was about 17 or 18 at that point. I was 18 when I finished secondary school. I, um, I remember I was trying to look for a birthday present for my friend at the time. And I knew that she had wanted to play uh, Sims 2 for a while. So I was looking at that. And then I also really randomly found a box for Persona 4, which I think actually was just out like only a couple of months before I found it. I was looking at the two boxes and being like, I know she wants Sims 2, but this other game, oh, it looks so interesting. I wonder what that's about. Um, so uh, I ended up getting her Sims 2 in the end and then Persona 4 for myself. So that was like an entirely new world then. It was a completely different kind of game. I'd never, I'd never played anything like it. And that really got me obsessed with the game for years afterwards. I do a lot of fan art for it, which pops up at some point in the video. But um, since then, I just kind of dabble, I guess, in like Animal Crossing and I still play the Pokemon games despite their controversies now as well. Ace Attorney. Um, I've played Ace Attorney as well since um, the first games came out, I think. Uh, I am in the middle of playing the Ace Attorney Chronicles, which is really, really good on the Switch. God, what else? I've dabbled in a little bit of Dark Souls which I like, but is a terrifying game. Um, yeah, okay, so <laughs> that gives you a general overview. That's my experience with video games. Do I have any favorites I'd like to talk about? Well, on the topic of Ace Attorney, which actually, here we go, I was doing a few drawings there. Really, really recommend it. I don't hear enough people talking about it. If you like anything to do with crime or trying to solve crimes or catching out like villains or whatever it's a, it's really really good um if you've never heard of it you basically play as like a lawyer and you have to investigate crime scenes or you have to like catch people out in their lives in court and present evidence to kind of back up your argument and everything and it's just it's really really fun the way the characters are designed are brilliant as well and um yeah I would really, really recommend it. So Ace Attorney is one of my favorites. Um, what? Oh, actually one game that I completely forgot to mention is Okami. Um, I think it originally came out on the PS2 and now that there, there is a Switch port for it as well, as far as I know. But Okami is one of those games where it's actually just, it's a work of art on its own. Okami is like, also if you haven't heard of it, you play as the wolf god Amaterasu, um, who's also the sun god. In Japanese mythology. Basically the entire game revolves around Japanese mythology and it's designed to look like sumie paintings so there's like thick ink strokes and that's one of the game mechanics as well. I really really recommend that you look it up because if you haven't played it and you like mythology and you like drawing and you like all of that kind of stuff then definitely definitely look at it.
Okay. I think that was all the questions that I got. That's all that I wrote down anyway. So I don't think I missed any. That they were a combination of um, my community tab and Instagram. And I am going to stop talking right now because I'm going to say something else and I'll get back to you in a second. Right, okay, so that brings us to the end of about 2009, I think, which is um, when I finished secondary school and I was on my way into college, which lasted then about five years. And the problem I found with college was that the entire time I was really creatively drained and I really felt like nothing I did was any good. And that kind of, that was a mentality that was kind of hammered into me at college and that bled in a lot to my own kind of uh, sketchbook work or, you know, the my own kind of drawings. So I'm not actually going to show you all of those sketchbooks, save for two, because the two that I will show you basically show you how um, all of them looked, which is to say not, <laughs> not really inspired. The only thing that kind of kept me going through my sketchbooks at the time was my Nuzlocke comic. That was kind of like my solid anchor through those five years. So yeah, I'm not going to show you all of them. Um, I'll just show you two so you can get an idea of like what I was doing at the time. And then we're going to skip ahead again then to about like 2016, I think. Um, yeah, so apologies for the intermission. That's all. Okay, and I'm back. So this portion is going to go really, really fast because like I was saying, these sketchbooks are a bit of a non-event. So I'm not really particularly interested in like focusing on anything. All of the pages are like this. So it's just my Nuzlocke comic. And um, that's why I'm going through it so quickly because all of this stuff is on my DeviantArt. And um, it's just the same thing over and over again. So yeah, it's not particularly interesting. But um, what else was I going to say? You see, you saw at the beginning how dirty, like look even here at the back as well. This sketchbook was an absolute pile of trash because I used it as a mouse pad and it got so dirty. You know, it's, it just kind of gives you an idea of how little respect I had for my own kind of sketchbooks. And I, everything's in black and white. There's no color. There's no life in it really. It's just so bland. Um, it's also half assed. Yeah, college really wasn't a great time for me. I'm glad I did it and I'm glad I got the degree, but um, it just wasn't a particularly good experience for me. And my sketchbooks from that time definitely reflect that. So yeah, I mean, this is essentially just giving you the best idea of how, how those sketchbooks were. Now we've come up to 2016. So again, we've kind of jumped ahead a little bit and I'm still finding it hard to kind of get back into my sketchbooks after after college because um, my self-confidence was really like shot. I found it really, really hard to start kind of getting my confidence back. Um, so this, I kind of gave up at not too far along in this. Oh, sorry. I've been I've been talking for so long now that like I can't like concentrate anymore. Um, but yeah, a lot of these pages were very kind of wasted, a lot of blank space. It's just nothing really. I'm still just trying to get back into it. Oh, these drawings then I kind of did like a long time after I started. These were for uh, an Inktober. I can't remember which year, but you can kind of see a little bit of color starting to kind of creep back in. I am on the other side now. I'm experimenting again with painting and whatever. So you can kind of see like these glimpses into how I want to treat my sketchbook. <laughs> I'm starting to bring more color again, which I don't know. It's I, it's a personal thing. I understand. But like looking at through these sketchbooks, I feel so much happier looking at them compared to the ones that I kept in like in, in college because here I feel like there's a little bit more of like my myself coming back into them and the timing was such that I had been with my boyfriend I think for about a year at this point and I mean like not to be too sappy or anything but that that made a difference to me I was feeling much happier in my life in general so um you know it does make a difference it well for me, it made a difference, and I it's it it brought the color back into my life. 
this is so pathetic but um whatever it just yeah I mean like that that helps a lot um for like my mental health and everything these next couple of little sketchbooks I actually love them they were from an illustration course that I then did for a year after I finished my main college and this one year of illustration was like the best year of like my academic career <laughs> that I ever had. Undertale was not a part of the curriculum. These were just all of these like secret drawings that I was doing at the back of this sketchbook, but um, it was such a good year. I was all like, I was starting to kind of gain a lot more confidence back in my own work. Um, so yeah, uh, these drawings, I love these drawings. They're so cute. Um, just it's funny how like even though I drew these so long ago they still give me that kind of like that bit of joy that I had at the time and that I felt coming coming back I know this is making my college experience sound so miserable and it wasn't that bad but it, it was pretty miserable um yeah like I don't miss it at all this was around the time that I was getting really into Steven Universe as well and it is a really good show but I was just kind of like you know messing around with some fusion ideas and I actually pretty much still like them that was a very poor sentence structure but I still quite like them actually um there are a couple of designs where I was kind of like looking at them earlier and being like oh actually do you know there were a couple of designs that ended up in the show that were similar to this not, uh, uh, ugh, I'm obviously not saying that it was taken from me or anything, but I just thought it, the, it was funny. Um, okay, and now this is like the last full-ish sketchbook that I have in 2017. Um, after this, in 2018, I got an iPad, so I didn't draw in a sketchbook for like a good two years after I got it. So everything I did was digital and from about 2020 then I started working in a sketchbook again and that was then the first one that I ever did a sketchbook tour on on my channel so now now you're totally caught up to kind of everything so my voice is getting really tired now there's not much left in the video anyway so I'm actually just going to finish it here I'll let the rest of the video play out Thank you so, so much for watching. I'm really sorry if I ended up rambling like a lot. I, I know I tend to do that, but um, I hope it was still enjoyable. And I hope you all have a really good day or evening or whatever it is. And I will say goodbye. So thank you and have a good day. Bye.